Hi, I'm Ehrman. This is me. You're probably wondering how I got here. Well, <laughs> it's a long story. We're side by side. No, we get bumped out. This isn't what I need. Yep. Apparently, I've not learned anything. Apparently, we're celebrating tonight. No, not again. Not again. No, 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 no. This is not what we want. That's not what we want. That's not what we want. Ah. Welcome to Overtake. A few days ago, I paid a visit to the fine folks at URD Modding and grabbed their two latest cars, namely the Michigan EGT and Dasha EGT, aka the Chevrolet Corvette C8R and Porsche 911 RSR. The Chevrolet Corvette C8R has been my personal favorite race car since the moment it debuted in early 2020. This is a bittersweet moment, for as much as I love the C8R and 911 RSR, both are set to be deprecated as the GTLM class goes the way of the dodo. In the spirit of sending my favorite track racing class out in style, we've set up a full grid of multi-class endurance races here at the timeless Daytona Speedway. We have a group of GTD cars bringing up the rear, us in the GTLM class, and of course the LMP1s leading the field. We'll be doing a time accelerated 24 hour race to showcase these beautiful cars in every lighting condition. The kicker? I'll be starting at the very back of the grid, against the grid of 100 strength AI. Speaking of which, hitting the subscribe button here is the best way to kickstart a ton more sim racing fun into your life. Alright, let's hit it. Okay, here we are in the grid, right at the back of the field of GT3s. I'm very curious, you don't normally do a standing start in these cars, and go! Go, go, go! Green, 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 and we get a massive launch compared to the Audi, shooting right up the inside. Okay, that's a little bit easier than I expected. Okay, we get past the entire GT3 class, even past one of the 911 GTLMs on the side. Coming up on our uh, C8R brethren right now into T1. Wow, that was uh, a far more ambitious start than I imagined. I don't know what the... what our opponents here are doing. Maybe I uh, caught them asleep at the wheel. All the better for us. All right, <laughs> we're working our way up through the back of the GTLM class. I have to watch out, of course. We do have cold brakes. We've got cold tires. Can't go too hard into these turns. You have to say these are some very pretty looking cars. Very, very juxtaposed, aren't they? Very angular F22 looking Corvettes with very bulbous, shapely Porsches. Two very different design schools, design principles, but both very beautiful cars in their own right. All right coming up around this turn, it's. It's very, very interesting driving these cars for the first time. It, they're very vague and nebulous, especially in the low speed corners. It's hard to work out when you're going to lose the car. It's hard to feel the weight transfer. So there's definitely a little bit of guesswork until you find the idyllic sweet spots. We push on out towards the oval for the first time now. This is where it becomes a slot car draft game. We've of course lowered the, the rear wing as much as we can while still retaining some stability. That Porsche in front of us just sparking all over the place. The poor bottom of that car. And coming up to the chicane now, the high-speed chicane that I love oh so much. Braking hard at two. Go down to third gear in this car. Maintain some stability. Oh, no, it goes out wide. We lose one Porsche. Almost lose another. Oh, my God. If we look in the rear, I think he's taken out a bunch of cars with him. Okay, then. We're lucky to have missed that scrap. Going on ahead now, we've gained a few positions here. Midfield in the GTLM class, you can see it looks to be a Porsche leading the front of this field. It, it seems like the Porsches are having a, a better time of it. They seem to be quicker here at Daytona. Perhaps they have less drag. Perhaps the BOP is ever so slightly better for very, very high top speed tracks such as this. Now, of course, this is where the high downforce stuff comes in handy. We have to brake very nice and early. Make sure we kind of feel the car out. Oh my God! And that's one thing you probably won't see the C8R doing in real life anytime soon. A uh, lot, of, lot of slip angle. Very, very interesting low speed drift there. We go flat chat. Cut over the inside curb. Brake midway through the cones here. Drop down to second. Get over that curb, but not too much. Of course, we are in AC. It does like to do the old uh, black hole curb simulation on us. It's not like somebody put super glue all over the curbing. Feathering the throttle ever so slightly. We've got... Halfway TC on, we want to retain as much of the rear tires as we can. This is, after all, a quote-unquote endurance race as we're making up ground to this Porsche up ahead. Seems like the car has been tuned reasonably well. We're able to make up ground. I think the chicane is usually where we catch them, so let's see how we go. I might have to break a little bit earlier here. We are, we are in the tow, which means there's going to be no aero through here. Car's going to be very slippy. Yes, yes, as we push on on the inside, right past the Porsche. Trailing our C8R brethren here with an almost identical paint job. See you later, mate, as we push on through the inside. 
and make our way toward what looks to be the... I was going to say the leading CRR, but there appear to be two CRRs. There's one in second position up ahead with a Porsche in pole. So we've got a bit of work ahead of us, a bit of work to do, but I'm confident we'll get there. Into T1 again, braking real hard. Lots of engine braking required here as we push on on the inside. You really don't want to spin out here. Very, very easy to lose the rear of the car, especially during these low to mid-speed corners when the aero is kind of on the cusp of kicking in. You can definitely tell you're in a GT car, not a prototype. You don't have magical levels of grip here. You have to be quite sensible in what you do. This very space-age looking C8R steering wheel, if it can even be called a wheel anymore. Some reasonably nice interior modeling here. I don't know how I feel about the scan lines on the rear view monitor though. I'm not sure if that's the case in real life. I mean, maybe it is. Maybe they have CRT TVs in the C8R in real life. Who knows? I'm no expert. I just talk for a living. All right, braking hard down to two. We go down the hairpin on the throttle, rotating the car on the throttle, but we can't overdo it, of course. Always very, very tricky. Always a high probability of uh, spinning the car out here at low speeds. So we are making up ground. We are catching the last cars. Now on the oval, this is what suits our car set up the best. We are dialed for top speed. So as soon as we get within draft range, we're going to have a good time. So far, so good. Progressing really nicely through this race. Dropping down to third again. Oh, the line's a little bit off, a little bit off. And I think we've lost the prototype on the outside there. RIP, mate. Rip. All right, up to fifth gear. Let's see, what are, the, what are the revs like now? I can see them. 7,000, 7,300. Okay, you shifted about 7,300. There you go. Maybe earlier. Who knows? I'm no expert. I just shift when the lights blink at me. Let's see, Adar's possibly trying to go for a move on the inside, but no, he gets cut off by the Porsche. Porsche defends his line as we go back into T1 yet again. As I, of course, lose track which lap we're on because uh, such things don't matter to me. At the end of the day, it's all about the experience, isn't it? It's when the race ends, that's the sad moment. <laughs> Doesn't matter if we win or lose. Whenever we're not racing, we're losing, right? I have tuned it to be a little bit more responsive, a little bit more snappy, a little bit more rotatey, but it still, still just doesn't quite want to pivot in on these lower speed corners. I see a bit of understeer on the entry. I really have to rotate the rear of the car with the throttle coming out. And we're going to brake midway through these cones. Use a lot of engine braking in this car. Very, very helpful. <laughs> a bit of a snap on the exit there. And see our high beams are just illuminating the crap out of our opposition up here. I'm just testing them, see if they're actually on or off. It's pretty obvious that they were on the whole time. That is some high luminescence, as we say. AMG would be proud. But you can see the... <laughs> but you can see the opponent's skeleton through that. Breaking hard at two again. And oh, I've gone. I've overshot ever so slightly. We're side by side. No, we get pumped out. No, 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 no. This is not what we need. This isn't what I need. Trying to safe rejoin. Safe rejoin. Safe re... Okay. All right. I haven't taken out the leader of the cup car this time. Very good. Very good. So that's lost us a little bit of time, but it's okay. We'll, we'll grind our way back up. Again, as I say, it's all about the experience. It's all about the racing. It's not about the winning. And, uh, you know, it's a good thing that I say that. Very convenient, given my lack of skill at driving. Yes, okay, we appear to be... Uh, what are we there? Maybe two, two and a half seconds away, maybe three seconds away from the nearest opponent who, you know, defended ever so novelly. As, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of defensive maneuvers in my time. Whoa, a bit of a snap there. Wow, okay. Bit of uh, three snaps there. I can tell the car very unresponsive to me. Maybe I still had marbles on from that little off-road excursion that that guy sent us on. Um, a very interesting defending technique from him there, I must say, but, uh, you know, no love lost, all's well that ends well, and certainly this car is still intact, so here we are. And braking hard down to second again. Oh, I've overshot ever so slightly, but it's not too bad. I can recover it on throttle. You can actually rotate this car a bit. Not too bad, not too bad. And back on the oval, you can see we're gradually making time again. Now we have to pick our overtake point a little bit more intelligently next time, I think. Maybe don't cut the inside on the chicane and assume that the opponent's car will magically disappear. I'll work on it. Live and learn. Oh, very nice, very nice. Rotated the car on the throttle. Schumacher would be proud. Senna would be proud. All the greats of old would be proud. I hope Anthony Garcia would be proud too. As we get full lock, full opposite lock, that is not something you're likely to see a CR do in real life again. For some reason, that corner really elicits some, uh, let's say, eight-year-old sim racing physics behavior, or is it seven years old? Something. It's something. It's uh, certainly not at the current standard. <laughs> but hey, it's fun. We're here to have fun. The cars look very good. It's a nice, immersive environment. And I think, 
I think the sun may may be setting now as we can see. What are those prototypes or GT? I think those are GT3s uh, behind us coming through. One of the great things about Daytona is you can often see the cars that are trailing you just because of the way that the track kind of sweeps back in on itself. Yes, the shadows are getting long. We're driving in shadow now. Very, very cool. Things are starting to look nice and orange hued. It's that pretty time of day. Look at that nice clouds in the background there. Very low cloud cover today. Idyllic racing weather, as they say, as we catch our C8R brethren again. I hope he's learned something about uh, courtesy since the last time we encountered him. He appears to be struggling getting past that 911. He seems to have greater pace, but he just can't quite get past him. As the shadows get long indeed. Yep, yep, very, very long. We can start seeing the car's headlights actually making an imprint on the road now. The sun is really dipping over the horizon. This is definitely that cool time of day. Hail AC. Nothing quite like AC with all of its aftermarket mods to look this amazing. Oh, and full opposite lock again. Whatever. Whatever. We're not here for realism. We're here for fun. Oh, as they get that gorgeous orange hue. This is getting filmic now. This is getting downright cinematic here. I mean, you know, if I had Michael Fassbender pretending he was me in this car right here, this is the kind of tone mapping I would expect. You know, this is the kind of cinematic grading I would expect. Good job, AC. Good job, Soul. Good job, CSP. Here we go, driving into the sunset. One last time, I presume, as the shadows get very long, as the, the headlights really do a heck of a job projecting out ahead there. Very, very cool the way dynamic shadowing works in this title. We start to approach the C8R one more time. Have I learned from last time, or am I going to go in on the inside? Hmm? What do we think? Yep, apparently I've not learned anything. Breaking hard yet again. Oh, and we don't go side by side, thankfully. It works out so much better as we take the run out. And this is, of course, where we're usually faster. That is the same place to overtake. You lose way less time coming out quickly. Slow in, out fast, as those old timers say. The 911 sparks errantly. And uh, it seems like his top speed is no match for ours. We should be able to get him on the inside here. And yes, no problem whatsoever. Taking the inside. Are we going to get the line? Can we move out to the outside? Maybe not fully. We're going to go from the middle here. Brake hard. Lots of engine braking. Tons of engine braking. Go down second. Rotate the car. Yes, yes, yes. Feather it, feather it, feather it. Yes, beautiful. Perfect. Textbook. Exactly the way we wanted it. And then brake at the cones here. Down to second. Rotate in. Really sharp turn here. We're we going to get full opposite lock again. Not so much. Not so much. Not too bad. Not too bad. Not great, but not terrible. We're in it to win it now. We're up there. We're in fourth position in the GTLM class. Coming up on the last two 911s and the one C8R. Again, beautiful cars and fireworks. Okay, apparently we're celebrating tonight. Sure, why not? Sending off the GTLM class in absolute style. Okay, a bit of a snap on the exit there. Definitely, you know, in these GTEs, it's, it's a little bit more engaging. It's a little bit more exciting than GT3s. It isn't quite so much of a brain-off formulaic experience. There's still some play. There's still some kind of, you know, twisting and turning. They're a bit harder to drive, but they're a bit more lively to drive at the same time. I do like them very much. Brake hard at two again. Oh, we brake late. We brake late. And no, not again. Not again. No, 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 no. That's not what we want. That's not what we want. That's not what we want. Ah. Okay, well, we appear to have gained a position there. I actually did not get to see what happened to that Porsche there. I assumed that he fared worse than we did from that scuffle. No love lost, really. Um, you know, no skin off my nose. Ooh, that's some pretty fireworks. Yeah. Don't mind the accidents, guys. Just pay attention to the pretty lights. Very nice. Okay, back to T1, unobstructed now. Uh, I believe we are in third position, making our way up to the first two, the class leaders. Can we be the class leader as we get a snap all the way through that corner? Guess I'm getting closer to that ever-elusive limit. Kind of feeling it out, understanding where the car is as I overshoot the apex, unfortunately trying to turn in hard. And there we go, lots of TR. Uh, PC lights? Traction lights? I'm going to guess they're traction cut lights. Or slip lights. Something. They're bad things happening lights. You don't want to see them. <laughs> now,
Now, what I'm wondering is when are the prototypes going to start lapping us? Because the prototypes are good, I think, I think they might be faster than 10 seconds a lap on us here. So they will eventually, before the end of this race, start lapping us, I believe. At least the class leaders will. Well, and there's our first one. It's almost like I knew. It's almost like I've done this before. Oh, you can really get an appreciation for the, the speed difference in the classes, can't you? The, the old LMP1s are just... They're something else, aren't they? All right, see how we fare here again on the high-speed chicane. Brake hard down a second, fourth, third. Yes, coming in, get a nice exit through there. Not bad at all, son, not bad. We get a massive run on the class leaders. Push on on the inside. Cut his lunch. Get behind the tailpipe of the 911. Suck down those fumes. Suck them in. Let them energize us. Take all those sparks in our face and shoot on around on the outside. And that is us taking the class leading position in GTLM, finally. There we go. As the prototypes start to approach us from behind, there we go. It's all happening now. With any luck, they'll act as traffic for the guys behind us. They'll split us up and we'll get the lead. A man can dream. Here we go. On our favorite snappy, snappy corner. That break nice and late. Possibly flat spot the tires. Of course, no ABS in the GTE cars or GTLM, whatever you want to call it. The GTE with a different BOP. As we get another prototype taking us on the outside. Once again, gives you an appreciation for the speed difference as we try and get into the slipstream slightly. Try and pick up some of the, the well, not clean air, the dirty air on the back. See if we can get a bit of a toe on the straight here. We've got to watch out when it comes to the chicane, though. We've got a prototype tailing us. Unfortunately, he caught us at the wrong time. Not much you can do there, no matter what class you are. You really don't want to be overtaking on that chicane, as I may or may not have learned the hard way. And there he goes. We suck down that tailpipe again and get all those extra tenths. Thank you. Thank you very much. But do they ever get tired of fireworks? I don't, is, isn't there some, like, atmospheric damage you can do? Like, setting off that much gunpowder? Just relax, guys. Jeez. I know the Americans are a festive people, but jeez, come on. I feel like we're not too far off now. I actually don't know how many laps are left, but I feel like this is it. I feel like we're approaching the tail end of all this now. The GTLMs we appear to have left behind, they're not providing that much of a challenge to us. <laughs> right now, it's we're just trying to survive the prototype traffic, really. I think we can do a pretty decent job of keeping that 911 in our rearview mirror. I just need to stay relatively consistent here. About 11 liters of fuel. It means there might be a few more laps left here. We break for the bus stop again. Go over that little curbed section. We shoot out wide, but it's not too bad. I managed to recover it. Very easy to get track limits there. Very easy to shorthand your race there. Certainly you can kind of change the car's balance, lose the rear through there, certainly as we've seen some of our opposing cars do. I think we lost the prototype there. We've certainly lost a few GT cars there on the way, and Fireworks still going strong. Apparently there's an endless reservoir. Use that engine braking to effect. We have another prototype trying to cut our lunch on the inside here. No such luck, my friend. Gonna have to work your way around me. I'm not as gracious as I once was. I've learned the hard way through online endurance races. I hold my line. You work out a way around me, mate. That's how it works. It's your lost time, not mine. It's very, very cool. It's a very different kind of experience dealing with traffic that's overtaking you rather than you being the one overtaking. I have to say, if I if I have my own personal preference, I like being in the top tier class, the one that overtakes everyone. I feel like I'm much better in an aggressive role when driving rather than a defensive one. I hate being defensive. I hate driving in my rear view mirrors. But I think it's all it's all part of the skill set that you want to learn because inevitably you're going to be in a position where that's going to be happening and hopefully before long for myself in real life on the Nürburgring in um, you know certain certain regional races where I might be driving a complete uh, 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 what, what do we call it a crap box <laughs> of a car and get overtaken by GT3s one more time or perhaps two more times or three more times who knows. The amount of fuel I have left tells me there could be potentially one more lap left after this. I have no readout in here. My race engineer is not speaking to me. I feel very lonely. Very lonely, hence why I'm talking to myself. Keep myself company as we go across the finish line for uh, almost 143 flat. Break nice and hard for what I assume is the last time. No, it is the actual last time. That is the end of our race, ladies and gents. Well, a 24-hour race in the timeless Daytona can only ever be insanely fun. 
I hope you enjoyed watching that race as much as I enjoyed running it. These glorious cars deserve a fitting send-off. Here's to hoping we one day see their spiritual successes rear their heads in the GT3 class. Until that day, I hope you have a good one, and I'll see you all next time.